Hey guys, Josh from Solution Based. Still on uh, what type of system do I have? And we're going to use this one again because this one happens to be uh, complex and have a bunch of components to it. And what we're going to focus on in this video is this guy right here. So what this guy is, is a, called a fan coil. Okay, and what a fan coil does is it takes a heating or cooling from another source, in this case a boiler. It can be a chill cooling tower. There's other things that use fan coils, but in most household applications, you're gonna have a boiler that is providing hot water to this coil. The water goes through the coil and it has fins inside there. And then this guy, the air handler, provides the airflow to then draw that or blow over the top of that coil and provide heating to the space. So, well, why do we need something like that when we already have a heat pump going on here? The reason why is this, and there's a lot of uh, misinformation or you know difficulty in understanding heat pumps especially we're in Pennsylvania or in southeast Pennsylvania people are like oh I heard heat pumps were no good for this latitude 20 years ago that was actually true there the, the, the technology was such I'm gonna shut this off the technology was such that it struggled with our temperatures it was good for just a little bit south of here but over the years the technology and what we call the heat curve has gotten better and better and now I'm pretty comfortable and I'm very conservative about this uh, putting heat pumps in in our latitude so but at about 30 25 degrees something like that heat pumps start to become less effective and they can't keep up with the space and that uh, heating curve that's called based on outside temperature changes with each system. I have a heat pump that operates down to 14 degrees, I have a mini split heat pump that operates down to 5 degrees, and then I have this one which is a conventional heat pump that starts to struggle at about 28 degrees. So in each one of those cases we handle the backup heating in a different way, um, or it can be done in different ways. In this particular case, instead of running a giant electric line and putting a resistance coil in here electrically, which is more common, I ran my boiler piping to this because I happen to have a boiler for other applications in this house. So, and it operates exactly the same as any other type of emergency backup heating. It just happens to be sourced by water from a boiler rather than electricity. And I want you guys to understand, on your thermostat on a heat pump, if you're not familiar with it, you're going to have a setting that says EM heat, okay, emergency heat, um, or it's going to say aux heat, depending on how the technician set it up. Um, and it, the, the thermostats nowadays automatically switch over based on the logic that is in the thermostat for when your building needs that. So if for whatever reason the outdoor is sitting at 5 degrees outside and you have a conventional heat pump and it can't keep up, your thermostat logic should automatically switch you over to emergency heat as needed. It also, when the outdoor goes into defrost, will switch you over to emergency heat because while the outdoor unit's in defrost, um, uh, there's no heating coming from it, so it will use uh, its backup source to get through that cycle, and that's completely normal. But you should know about emergency heating on your thermostat, and you can go right into the logic. It'll always be a spot. You're going to go mode, and it's going to say emergency heat. So if you find out you're in trouble and the outdoor is not working, you can switch it manually over to emergency heat if for some reason it's not doing it itself. So if you own a heat pump, and we've given you the tools to understand if you do or not, you should be immediately going to your thermostat instructions. You can get them online. You should have a copy of them. And then looking at how do I manually switch this over to emergency heat? And what are the parameters of this thermostat? When the thermostat does it have a timeline? If it drops by two degrees, does it automatically switch over to emergency heat? Uh, you know, do you absolutely need to know that? Maybe not, but it's a good thing to know because if you notice some funky operation, you can then manually switch it over. And you can avoid things like frozen pipes and all that stuff if you kind of know your system well enough to handle a problem and triage it before us or another service company gets out there. Thanks, guys.